Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be working on Predict a Winner. In this problem you're given an integer array nums and two players are playing the game. And essentially what happens is the first player has to pick from the right or the left and then the right player picks or the second player picks and then the first player picks and so on. And then whoever has the highest score wins the game. So you're just picking from the left or the right of the array until there's no elements left. So let's go through these examples. We have one, five, two. So you can see here that this 5 is greater than the 1 and the 2, and the first player has to pick first. So no matter if he picks the 1 or the 2, the second player will pick the 5, right? Because like if you pick the 1, then the second player can pick the 5, because you have to pick from the left or the right side. You can't pick from the middle. So no matter what happens, the first player can't win this game. And so we were returning false here. Okay, let's look at the second example. So here, once again, it's pretty straightforward you whoever gets this essentially is going to win right so the first player naturally he can't select this as his first move otherwise the second player is going to win so the first player is going to pick the one and then the second player no matter what he picks then the first player would get this 233 and so that person will win so the first player will win the game here so essentially what this problem boils down to is you have a choice to pick from the left or the right and you're trying to win the game and the states, like the next state, relies on the previous state, right? Like if, if one player picks here, then this is gone. So then the second player has to pick from here. So the states are relying on each other. And if you look at our constraints, they're actually quite generous here. So there's only 20 numbers. So we can use really inefficient algorithms, but let's just try to like come up with something and then we'll, we'll go from there, right? So because we have such a big like so, so few elements, let's actually try to come up with a DP algorithm here and see what constraints we need. So if you remember from my other videos, what do we need for a DP, right? We need figure out, so we need to figure out the parameters, define a base case. So I'll just make some space here. So we have and to define a recursive case. And then finally make sure like, so when we figure out these parameters, we have to make sure that, you know, this will actually pass. So for something like 20, we can have something really inefficient, like maybe even two to the 20th will pass technically. So you could have a really inefficient algorithm, but let's just try to have something reasonable. So what do we need to know? Like what are the things we need to know to represent the state of the numbers? Well, we have these numbers, right? Like, and can we just, let's say, can we just use an index? Would that work? Well, let's, let's figure that out, right? So if we have an array like this, like we just say we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say, and we take a number, we, because we can take from either side, we can't just have an index to represent where we're at, where we're at right? Like, like, let's say we take this number. Now this is the available space. You could store the array, but that's not super efficient. So instead, we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna store the left and the right bounds of the array. So essentially, what's gonna happen here? Like the left is gonna start here, the right is gonna start here, and then we're gonna say like, okay, if we take from here, we'll move the left, and if we take from here, we'll move the right. Right. So we need a left and a right, and that's not too costly because, like I said, the array is only like twenty. So left and a right is like twenty and twenty. That's nothing, right? Now, what else do we need here? Well, we also need to know whose turn it is, right? Like, player one is, so because this is a zero sum game, what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna focus on maximizing player one's score, but on player two's turn, the way we're gonna have the logic here is he's gonna try to minimize player one's score. So because this is a zero sum game, like let's say the sum of this is just some random number, let's say it's 29. Player two is just going to want to minimize player one score because that's going to maximize his chances of winning. So we're going to say for player two when it's his turn, let's make the move that for the next state, it's going to minimize that. And I'm going to show you what I mean in the future. But So for these parameters, what we actually need is we need a left, we need a right, and we need a turn. And how big is this whole thing? Well, left can only be 20, right can only be 20, and this is two. So that's nothing, right? It's like 400 times two. That's 800, like... You know, that's almost nothing. Now, what's a base case? Well, obviously we're gonna have the, the standard base case of caching, right, in a DP algorithm, so that's gonna be one of them. Now, how do we actually need know when we are now? Well, 
that's also pretty straightforward. So these left and the right are going to move towards each other, and then there will be a point when the left equals the right, which will be the last element, and then finally the left will surpass the right. Either the left will go too far or the right will go too far, and then you're going to have a left that's to the right of the right, and that means we're done. So when the left is greater than the right, that's our base case, and caching. So naturally, when left is greater than the right, what's the score we're going to want to be returning? Well, we're going to be returning zero because we can't do anything else. Now, this is the part that we need to figure out, this recursive case. And this is going to depend on whose turn it is. So let's actually do this for both players. So let's make this for player one. So player one can either take the left or the right, right? So he can take, he can take the left or the right. If he takes the left, then his score is going to be, you know, nums. Let's just call let's just call this array like R or something, right? So it's either going to be R left, say L plus, you know, and what's going to be like the DP state. So so if we take from the left, we are moving the left one, right? So it's going to be like left plus one here, and then we're going to have the right is going to remain the same, and then the the turn. So let's just say the turn is zero for player, you know, for the first guy, and then one for the second guy or something. It doesn't really matter. So this is player one, and then one is player two. So then if player one went, if it was his turn, right, if, if the turn was zero, then it's going to be player two's turn. So we're just going to say, let's put in a one here. So this is going to be one of the choices, right? Take from the left, move the left. The other choice is going to be pretty similar, except now we're taking from the right. So it's going to be array of a right plus and then what's our DP state so now we're taking from the right so the left remains the same and the right goes to the the right moves to the left one so right minus one and now it's gonna be player one's turn again so that's gonna be the recursive case for player one right we're just gonna maximize this so max of these two things we're gonna take and then we're gonna say all right whatever gives us a maximum value either this one or this one that's gonna be removed now what about for the other guy, right? So for the other guy, and like what score do we even need to be returning? Like here we're actually returning a score, but what are we doing for the other guy? Right, like what, what are we doing? Okay, well let's figure that out. So what we need to do for the other guy is we're also gonna take from the left to the right, but we're gonna try to minimize. So we're gonna say player two score is zero because we don't really care, we can calculate that later. Like once we get player one score, we could figure out player two score just by doing the sum of the array minus player one score. But in, for the player one, we're gonna say, we're gonna actually take where we're minimizing the next state of player one, right? So we're gonna say, we're gonna minimize DP of, if we take from the left, it's gonna be L plus one, right? Zero. Or if, if we take from the right, it's gonna be DP L, R plus one, zero. And just to explain this, so if we take from the left, that means the left is gonna move, right? So the right's gonna stay the same, and then it's gonna be player one's turn, which we're, like I said, we're gonna symbolize the turns by zero and one. And so player one will have turn zero. And then if we take from the right, this should actually be minus one. So let's delete that. Okay. And that'll be like that. And so essentially what we're saying here is we don't really care about our score. We're just trying to minimize the other guy because it's a zero sum game. So the smaller his score, the bigger our score. And so that's that's kind of what we're going to be doing in this recursive case is we're going to say, OK, for player one, let's just take to maximize our score during this move. And then for player two, we're going to say, let's take to minimize the next guy's score in his next move. So this is actually going to be player one's next move. This is player one's next move. And this is player two's next move. So we're trying to minimize, we're trying to maximize like this whole thing. And we are going to, and, and the reason, the reason we're doing it this way is like here, our score will just be zero. Like for the next one, our score will just be zero, but we still have to, at, at least for that section, it's going to be zero, but we'll still have like points later on. So this is what it's going to look like. This is our recursive algorithm. And like I said, um, the parameters were quite generous here. So we only have 800. And this is very similar to a stone game. I think it's almost the same exact question, I feel like, where you're taking from the left or the right or something like that. So it's essentially the same thing. So you, you can recognize here, you only need to take the score for one player. You don't need it for both because this is a zero sum game, right? Like, like let's say the sum is 30 
and player one scores 14, we, we can just know that player two scores 16, right? And then we can figure out the winner from there. All we need is one person's like optimal score, we can figure out the other one. Okay, so now we have enough to start coding. So let's do that. So we're gonna have a visited, as always. Let's make this int. And we're gonna have our recursive function, let's call it winner. And it's actually gonna take some parameters, right? So we need a left, a right, and a turn. And then what's our base case? Our base case is if left is greater than right, that means that we have no more elements. So we're gonna return zero there. And also if left, right, turn in visited, we can return that as well. So return visited, left, right, turn. Okay, now we're gonna do the, you know, we're just gonna make a res here for now. Now we actually need to figure out like what we need to do for, for someone's turn. So if turn equals zero, that means it's player one's turn. That means they are going to try to maximize their score. So it's gonna be res equals maximum of, if we take from the left, that's gonna be nums left plus dp of left plus one. And then it's gonna be uh, right. And then the turn, it's gonna be player one's turn or player two's turn now, so we're gonna make it we could actually make this a little bit clearer. We could just do turn one and two, turn two, or player one and two, make it a little bit clearer. So we'll just say this is player two's turn now. And then we're gonna have the same exact thing one more time. So this is gonna be nums right. And then this is gonna be right minus one. This is like this. Okay, so that's for player one. Now, otherwise it's player two's turn. It's gonna be very similar code. So for player two, yeah. We're gonna say let let it be the um and like I said we're not we're not really caring about this but essentially for player two we don't need to add this we are trying to minimize player one's next move so we're trying to say for this next state let's just minimize that and then that's our goal player one is trying to minimize player two's score so we're gonna try to take from the left and we're gonna try to take from the right and now the next person is gonna player one there we go. And finally, we need to actually save it. So we're going to say visited of this equals res and return res. Okay. So once again, to explain this, so if it is player one's turn, they're going to try to maximize their score and they're actually going to want to add it to their score, right? Where for player two, he's trying, to, he's trying to minimize player one's next move. He doesn't really need to add to his own score. So hopefully that makes sense. And now, I mean, I'm sure you could do it in other ways. I'm sure you could try to like maximize for himself as well. So that, that would totally be fine, but we're gonna do it this way. So I think it will, it would actually work um, if you try to maximize for him as well. But anyway, so now what we need to do is we are going to uh, figure out like what do we need, right? So this is gonna return us player one score if we call it from turn like you know, the initial index. So we're gonna say P1 score or something or something like that equals winner. And then what are the initial? So it's gonna be zero length nums minus one and then player one's turn. Okay. Now for player two's score, it's gonna be what? We don't even need to actually calculate it. We can just say return, uh, so we can just do, so player two score is actually gonna be sum nums minus P1 score, right? So we can just say this has to be less than or equal to P1 score for player one to win, because if it's a tie, player one wins. So essentially we're saying this is player two score. So we're saying player two score has to be less than or equal to player one score for this to be true. That means player one wins. Otherwise player two wins. If this is greater then this is gonna return false and then player two will win. So let's give that a go. Okay, DP, um, okay, sure. Ah, I guess we called it DP, let's just call this DP, might as well, instead of winner, I'll just call this DP here. Okay. Okay, so it does work and it's quite efficient. So um, let's think of the time and space here. So, for time, how many states can we have? We're only doing, if you think about it, in every single operation, assuming these are constant time. 
Uh, this is only going to be big O of 1 for all these. So even though we're doing two things, these are O of 1 after we run it maximum this many times. So it's going to be the left times the right times the number of turns. So we have two turns. For the left, if it's num, so just call that n. For the right, let's call that n as well, right? There can be n different values. So it's 2n squared, which just rounds to n squared. And for the space, it's going to be the same thing, O of n squared, because that's how many different states we can have. So usually for dp, time and space is the same, assuming this is roughly constant time, which it is for us. And we don't have like any other longer functions or anything. So hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, and that's going to be it for this problem. And if you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.